actually. Hey, Joe. I'm heading back down to the house. Hey, Joe. Yeah. Okay, so um, at uh, this is jo Joe LaFauci. I'm at his showroom in Watertown, uh, LaFauci Tile. Uh, I'll put all that information in the description. Uh, so that if you want to check them out, you can. You have a website? LaFaucitile.com. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll, all the social media stuff, but we'll post all yeah, that. Yeah, I'll, I'll put all that info in the uh, in, in the description, so so you can uh, find them. And if you're in the Boston area, um, check them out. Uh, you know, he's got some really nice style here. We'll take a little quick, quick look around the showroom a little bit later on, but we basically want to talk about tile, some tile trends, and a little bit of information on what the difference is between a ceramic tile and a porcelain tile. Uh, I don't think we're going to touch much on stone, on natural stone, but, you know, there is some confusion as, uh, you know, what a, what a ceramic tile is and what a porcelain tile is. So uh, we'll, we'll do a little bit of that. So just to get started, uh, you here have not only cell tile, but you have installation crews. So yeah, so we've been open now 12 years. Yeah. Uh, but our install department has been doing it since 1971, when my dad came over here from Italy. So your father is uh, an Italian born. Yep. And he's an immigrant here. Yep. And he's been doing tile all his life. Yep. So my so, so your second generation installer? Uh, something like that. So I'm going to say my brothers are actually second generation more installers than I am. Yeah. It's, let me let me correct. Your second generation tile, tile industry. industry. Yes. Yes. I, I I'll agree to that. So yeah. I just don't want to sit there and say that I'm a true installer like uh, like yourself. Uh, I have installed and I've been installing since I was a little kid. Yeah. Uh, but I transitioned more into the showroom uh, over the last 12 years, and I sell, predominantly sell. Uh, I'll do all the designs, layouts, square footages. So you're designed and built, because you yep. obviously have, have installers. Yep. So, so do, you, do you do plumbing and electrical, or you contract that out? Uh, we, uh, if it walks like a duck and talks like a duck, that's what we do. So okay. we only install tile. Okay, uh, Th that's fair. And we try to stay out of the other trades, but over the last... 30 years, we've partnered with some great electricians, some great plumbers that we Gen bring. Gen general contractors. Yeah, we bring those guys in when we need to. Yeah. And to make sure that the project goes right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, see, that's one of the benefits of getting like an install build. Yep. Because, you know, you have like a single source for, as far as the tile, tile uh, part of it is, you don't have to worry about, you know, hiring your own installer. You don't know if they're going to be doing good work. They don't know, you don't know if they, they are capable of installing some of the very large format tiles that we, have, you know, that are, are available today. Yep. So qualified uh, installers and people that know what they're doing is very, very important because the last thing you want to do is spend $10,000 on a bathroom and then have to redo it in a year's time. Well, that's exactly it. So what we're seeing a lot right now is large format. You're probably seeing it on your end as well. So before you go there, let, let's just define what a ceramic tile is. Yeah. And what a porcelain tile. So just to start, right? So all uh, all porcelain tiles are ceramics, but not all ceramic tiles are porcelain. Correct. So porcelains are usually fired at a higher temperature, yeah. and they're stronger and more durable. So the denser. Exactly. They're thicker. Uh, they're meant for heavy traffic areas. Um, I'm going to say 95, 99 percent of porcelain tiles can be used on the floors and walls. Yeah. Where ceramics are not that case. Ceramics are predominantly only used on the walls. Yeah. There are some that are qualified for light residential use. Yeah. Um, they're usually a clay body. Yeah. Um, you know, they have some sort of glaze to them all, but they're softer and they're more for wall tiles at that point. So just a little bit of uh, technical term, the, uh, the definition of a porcelain tile as opposed to a ceramic tile is actually defined by the water absorption. Everything Joe said is absolutely yep. correct. But just say, if anyone's wondering, you know, what is that point where it's cut off? So a porcelain tile has a water absorption of less than 0.5%, uh, yep. and a ceramic tile can be up to like 13%, and then there's, you know, they go down, and and, they and there's hardness of the, 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 the tile that can be, yep. that, that, we, I don't want to get into those terms, it's just basically a wall tile cannot be installed on a floor, Correct. but 99% of the time, a floor tile that's rated for a floor and usually the porcelain tile can be installed anywhere you want. Yep. 
So. And, and, what, and a lot of those things, uh, what Sal's talking about is with the water absorption, really plays a factor if you start getting into those indoor outdoor yeah. spaces. So I know in New England, there's a lot of homeowners who are like, oh, I want to tile my, my patio yeah. or my porch or my pool area. Bad idea. <laughs> yeah, it's a very, it's a dangerous idea in New England, at yeah. least this is my opinion, yeah. that because we get such fluctuations in temperature, even 0.5% um, or less, there's still some water absorption that happens in these porcelains that... And can, another another problem with that also is, I don't know how we got into this, yeah. but, but another problem with that is if you have any voids under the tile, water over you know over the year is going to migrate into those spaces and then you get a freeze thaw yep the ice is going to expand and over time it's going to pop the tile yep. so if you're uh, uh, thinking about doing tile outside think very carefully about that yep. but i don't want to get into any more of that yeah. because that you know that's another talk for another that, day yeah, that's another talk for another day but what we're seeing now is a lot of the trends are going to porcelains yeah. um the technology is so actually what I have found, right, is most of the time if you're doing a floor, it's porcelain tile. Once in a while you come across a ceramic tile. And the, the ceramic tiles most of the times, they you will find those at the box stores. Yep. And at uh you won't say your name. To, to those not to be <laughs> mentioned. Yeah. yeah. So the, usually your cheaper tiles are gonna be ceramic and an inferior tile in in, in reality. And uh your better tiles and more durable tiles are going to be possible. Yep. <clears throat> so um, the, there are very large tiles that are being installed. There are tiles up to you can have a job coming up, which is what? So we just finished one off uh, for new construction, a 24 by 48s. I just sold um, a project for 30 by 60s on the wall. And then we have a new project that's starting up, which we're going to be doing 60 by 120s. So just, just 60 by 120, just in case, is, is 5 feet by 10 feet. Yeah. These are tiles that are 5 feet wide and 10 feet tall. And they're, they're actually like, called thin gauge, uh, uh, porcelain. thin gauge porcelain panel tiles. Yes. So what he means by that is your average porcelain tile is going to be around a 3 8 thickness for the most part. These drop down to about a quarter inch yep, thickness. Exactly. And this is where, you know, Sal and I had some great conversations um, you know, today and over the years, um, where skilled installers like, you know, Sal or, you know, the guys that work for us really play a factor in your install. Because if you don't know how to handle these materials and work with them. So just one, how much is typically one tile at five by 10 foot tile? So you're talking, you know, somewhere, they, they range about somewhere between 40 and $50 a square foot sometimes. So that's so ten, oh, two thousand dollars so a panel one tile you know we'll just say that like, like a range between a thousand and say like three thousand dollars depending on what the tile is Correct. right so you imagine you get uh, an installer he's gonna put a tile up and he's never done this before now we're talking about one tile that's 10 feet by five feet and he cracks that tile and breaks that tile that just costs two thousand dollars yeah and then depending on how the contract's writing it, it's either costing the homeowner or costing um, the installer yeah. that type of money. But the analogy that I use all the time is just because you hand somebody a Ferrari doesn't mean they know how to drive it. Exactly. So it's, it's really important that for your homeowners and people listening is that sourcing materials from a showroom like myself or any other showroom in this area who knows what they're doing and how to use those materials in the right projects is key but also hiring guys or people that know how to work with this material is almost, almost equally as important. Well, I, I think actually, you know, ha, you know, anyone can buy the material yep. and not anyone can install it. And believe me, we've both seen um, very expensive bathrooms that have been installed and then a year later, they have to be ripped out because either the tile's cracking, tile's falling off the wall, the shower's leaking. You've seen it. It's a, uh, it's, 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 a, it's a sin. It's a, it's a sin. I see that all the time. So, especially the larger, the, and then <clears throat> if you're doing these very, very large porcelain panel tiles, you need a crew. Yep. You can't, the, if one guy shows up and he said he's going to do it, that, that's impossible. So, you need a crew. That's just, just one, one point there. And then, not only do you need the crew, you need 
the tools because you're not going to be cutting a 10 foot by 5 foot tile on a wet saw. That's just not going to happen. You need all the uh, specialized tools for carrying, handling, moving, placing uh, the, the tiles, and you also need to get the proper setting materials that, because you're going to, when you're spreading thin set for a large porcelain panel tile, you have to be able to have adequate open time and uh, pot life of your mortar so that by the time you get all everything spread, it's not gonna be skinned over and dried. Yeah. And one thing too, I'm not sure if you touched upon this or not, which I find to be very important, is the prep work. Is everything that goes behind the scenes that you don't see uh, makes the installer's life easier, but it's so important to getting the proper installation so that your walls are plumb that you know you're waterproofing correctly that all of that plays such a huge factor into it that a lot of guys don't understand they come up and they're like let's just slap tile on the wall and go so the uh, for large format tile a large format tile is defined as a tile that has one side larger than 15 inches longer than 15 inches so that could be a, uh, a, um, a six by 24 inch tile that's a large format tile although one side is only six inches the other tile is more the other side is more than 15 inches so the, the the flatness requirement for a large format tile is an eighth of an inch over 10 feet that what it can bury out of plane and a sixteenth of an inch in two feet that's half as much as you would re, as, as is required for a, a smaller format tile something that's smaller than 15 inches so basically what that's telling you is you need to have very flat floors or surfaces they don't necessarily have to be level but they have to be flat yep. so something I've you know I agree with Sal on the de technical definition I think where we've been doing this so long now you know you grew up in the age of 8 by 8 oh, six, yeah. 6 by 8 wall tile <laughs> 12 by 12s on when the When the 12 by 12s came out I'm everyone like, freaked out <laughs> yeah, I was like these are enormous so for me <laughs> yeah. about Eight nine years ago, when twelve by twenty fours yeah. became yeah. the new norm, yeah. a lot of guys were, yeah. and oh my god, it can't be done. Yeah, and that's basically what the most popular size is right now. Right. Is a twelve by twenty four. Twelve by twenty fours. But the larger tiles are actually getting more and more popular. E exactly. So twelve by twenty fours right now are, I would call industry standard. Yeah, that's what you're seeing almost anywhere. I don't care what showroom you're yeah. in, whether it's big box or not. 12 by 24 is a pretty much industry standard. Yeah. For me, what I'm seeing a lot of as large format tiles, anything bigger than that. Yeah. Because I feel like, for the most part, the industry has become pretty comfortable installing that. Oh, yeah. Um, Th but that's your bread and button now. Exactly. Yeah. And now what we're seeing is uh, 18 by 36s and 24 by 48s oh, yeah. becoming almost an everyday sale in here. So just, so maybe five years ago, you were doing like 12 by 24s is, is what you were doing. And then every so often you would do like a plank tile, which is like maybe six inches or eight inches by five feet or, t or six by 24. Or six, like the six by 36 was a real uh, common uh, one. Uh, six by 36 was a common one. But that's even shifted now because now more and more, especially on bathroom walls, you're seeing these big, these are actually ceramic tiles, softest tile, which is perfectly fine because it's on a wall, yep. right? Um, that are... 40 inches long, 42 inches long, by 13, yep. by 24, or whatever it is, but people are migrating more and more to the larger format tiles. And you know something? I actually like the larger format tiles. Well, it's kind of curious myself. to see if you like the larger or the old school mosaic. So it's no, interesting no. to see that you like the larger. I, I actually, um, like subway tile, subway tile is always very popular. Can't go wrong. And the, and, and the subway tiles, it used to be three by six, and everyone, you know, when you talked about subway tiles, it's three by six. But today you get subway tiles that are four by 16, or, or even larger, narrower, longer, whatever, and white subway tile. And it's just like sickening. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mean that because it's a classic. A, a, as but if you get sick and tired of installing uh, the same, same tile and all the time. As a, as, you know, a salesperson in yeah, here and yeah. a designer in here, it's tough, you yeah. know, customers are like, I want a subway tile. I'm like, okay, yeah, another subway bathroom. You don't get me wrong, they're all nice and it's good and I love, you know, that we can help them. You know what I found too, Joe, is, because uh, sometimes you end up doing more than one bathroom yep. in the, uh, in the, in the house, right? And they want one subway tiles. What I have found is like, sometimes they'll want black, right? 
And that's what my I found. That's my fault. I'll blame me on that. Yeah, I'll, I'll push it on them. So you and, <laughs> and if you're doing Subway Town, you got black route. You better be perfect on everything because you're yep. going to show every little defect. Yep. But what I found a lot of times, not always, but a lot of times, the first one is black route. The second one is a much lighter shade. Yeah. So what I'll do is a lot in my designs with uh, homeowners is if they want subway town and we're going to use it in multiple bathrooms, we'll try to do one like a white on white combo. Yeah. And maybe the floor is a little bit more interesting. Yeah. And then in another bathroom, we'll do maybe a floor that's more subtle. Yeah. And then doing, I try to avoid black when I can, but we'll do like a dark gray yeah. or a Silverado yeah, yeah. or something along those yeah, lines yeah, just to give it a little bit of contrast, which is nice. But nowadays that we're seeing a Every day, new vendors coming in with 24 by 48s, and you know we'll show them a bunch of those today that we have in here. It's interesting. It's cool, and the technology that has gone into these porcelains now resemble natural stone. Yeah, you, sometimes you, if you see a tile that years ago, you would go into a bathroom and you would see a tile that looked like marble, and you could see it from 10 feet away that it wasn't marble. Yep. You could see that it was a it was a porcelain tile or a ceramic tile that. You know, it was a, you know, just a printed marble look on there. Today, you can go and see, you, uh, see a bathroom, and you can get within like six inches of it, Still not and you can't tell immediately what it is. That's how good these, uh, the, the process has become, that you can see, and, and there's no repetition of grains because they use large different. Um, so the old school tiles, like yeah. you were talking about, a lot of them were like drum printed. Yeah. So you got four, right. five, six prints, which means it was a giant drum and yeah. they rolled out these prints. Nowadays they're using well, laser jet HD technology, yeah. and they can actually morph and change the design of the tile. So, so you don't get repetition. You're not getting repetition, but you're getting six, between sixty, like on the lower end and the more cost effective tiles. Yeah. Maybe it's like thirty or twenty prints. Yeah. On some of the higher ends, you're talking between sixty and a hundred different prints sometimes that will so make it look more natural. So what that basically means is when you uh, go into a master bathroom. Uh, you're probably never going to see two tiles that look exactly the same. Yep. And that's what... Uh, Do you remember the days of turning your tiles so that you have to make yeah, it look yeah, different? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, uh, but, but like that, that no repetition thing is something that usually used to come out of a mountain. Yeah. Because it was natural stone and you don't get two tiles alike. Now, I mean, if you've got a big enough area, I suppose you might, if you could see it if you really look for it. Yep. But... It, it, it's amazing what they can do today uh, in, in producing tiles. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah. So I'm kind of curious, Sal, on your end, as, as a showroom person, okay, talking to an installer, what are some of your biggest challenges that you're seeing on the install side of things compared to what we're going to see? So, prep. Yeah. Because you go in, like, if you're working for a GC, um, you know, they, they, they call you and say, hey, you know, uh, ready for tile. And then you go in there, and there's a big bowl on the floor, or a big ballet on the floor, or the uh, like, no, like in a so. shower. <laughs> in a shower, I will not uh, let anyone install any board. I have to put that up because I'm going to put that up. I'm going to shim. I'm going to wet shim. I'm going to do what I'm going to do. I'm going to get that flat before I install tile. Uh, if you have the GCs guys do it, they're just going to put it up. You're going to bowl the walls, and you end up with a bowl, a crown, or whatever, and it's just not good. So. Uh, Prep is one of the one of the really hard things to get people to understand that they have it has to be done right. They don't appreciate it. Yeah, and then because there's a lot of backup board going down, yep. uh, you know, I feel that that's old technology now, and I like uncoupling membranes just because I think it protects your investment a little bit more than a, than a backup board. Uh, but you know, there's nothing wrong with installing. Uh, back aboard. It's uh, tried and true. It's proven. As long as you do it properly, it's going to work fine. But as an older guy, I don't want to carry around hundreds of pounds of board when I can carry around something that weighs very little. Yeah, you can carry five large panels yeah. uh, and not kill yourself. Yeah. Well, you know, like you get a roll of Dietra, for example, 335 foot roll of Dietra. You put that on your shoulder and you bring it upstairs in one trip. Yep. Try and do that with backup board. Yeah, no, it's, all, it's an all day process. And, I, and I've been on that end where you had to carry them all up and yeah. go from there. So uh, the, there's another, you know, so old installation methods, if they're done properly, are perfectly fine. Yep. But, you know, new installation methods, uh, you know, will save labor, they'll save time, 
and it just makes it easier on the installer. No, I can agree to that. Uh, I think that's key. Like for us, one of some of the biggest challenges that we're having right now in you know, May of 2022, and there's all kinds of chaos going on in the world, which is unfortunate, but we're seeing cost increases. Oh, yeah. Well, you, well just think about it. The cost of gas, you know, uh, you know it used to cost a, a, a truck a, how much to fill a tank. Now the, the cost of gas is twice as much. Yep. It's going to cost them twice as much, and that, and that, and that cost can't just be absorbed. It's going to have to be... Uh, passed on to the con consumer, and that affects everything. And it affects the raw materials. It affects the the final product. It, it affects you know everything. So I've been you know sales on the install side of things. I'm on the sales side. Uh, I talk to a lot of the manufacturers probably a little bit more than you do. Yeah. Uh, I talk to a lot of the reps that you know are pitching tiles to us, and I have conversations with them to understand well why. I want to understand why there's cost increases. Yeah. It's not just, oh, we're having cost increases, which a lot of people feel like they're just jacking up the prices. Yeah. There's a lot of strain on the raw materials and where they're coming from in the world and gas prices to make these raw materials yeah. too. Yeah. So for us, like we truly feel bad as a showroom when a customer comes in on April 1st and specs something out and it's, let's call it $8.99 a square foot. Well, they come back in the middle of May to now order it and there was a 10% Increase. Yeah, that's not because you did that. It's just the cost of the material. And the customers look at me like, "Oh, you're gonna, you, you got to do better. You got to do something about it all." And I'm like, "There's nothing I can do." It's just the cost. I we mean, try, it, we try to lock in prices whenever we can yeah. for our consumers. But the thing is, you can't lock in a price if you don't have the material. Exactly. And, so that, and that's if you have it in stock, then you can lock it in. But if it's not yeah. in stock. It's, it's, there's nothing really yeah. we can do. The good news is we've partnered with some amazing distributors and some amazing vendors where a lot of our showrooms like three to five day turnaround, yeah. which is which is really well, that's good. That's actually very good, yeah. Short of going to a big box where you walk in, you grab whatever they have. So just to make a little point, I, I have a bathroom that I'm, I'm actually off today because uh, I have a bathroom I was supposed to be starting, but uh, <laughs> there was a delay in getting the tile because of the transportation, yep. right? So the supply chain. So that they're not going to have the tile now to the end of the month. So I had to switch to doing a, a different install, uh, and so we have to wait for that tile to come in before I can start that bathroom. So there's problems that happen in, in scheduling as well. Yeah. So for us, like I said, we try to avoid all that because we partner with a lot of vendors locally. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. I have some materials that are longer lead times or, or back order. But you plan, you plan a, a plan for that. But we plan for it and we built our showroom a little bit differently. So we try to make sure that we're keeping things uh, in stock, ready to go for your clients. And I gave Sal a tour of the warehouse earlier. We're open to storing things for our clients so that when they're ready, yeah. that project's as long as they don't want to store it for three years. Well, that's a different story, <laughs> but yeah, we try to store it within a reasonable amount of time. Yeah. Because I never want to be the reason that your project is held up. Yeah. It's the yes. worst. Well, you know, um, I've been on jobs where they're trying to get the house finished because they want to get the, uh, they want to move in, and then you know they're waiting for kitchen cabinets, which have been delayed two, three, four, five times, yeah. and by the time. Uh, they come around, it's six months later, and the rest of the house is done, but the kitchen cabinets are uh, still not it. Now we're seeing that a lot, and I, I feel bad for some of these people who have to build right now. Uh, over the last six, seven, eight months, price increases with wood and all that. Now it's trickling down to tile, yeah. and we're seeing it. Uh, yeah. it, it, it hurts. Yeah, it raw hurts. materials, uh, you know, uh, most of it goes down, I think, mainly to the transportation costs, and then we have some instability in the world that's going to going to create uh, supply supply problems as well and yeah so so you, you just have to find someone that's going to be willing to work with you and uh, and try and solve the problems and get things done that's it sometimes I'm sure sometimes you if you can't well you don't really have that problem uh, because you of the way you had you um, source materials but uh, many times it's happened that you you know a customer picks a tile and they wait for that tile, and then it's just delayed, 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 and then they have to just reselect re -select something new. And we're not, listen, I'm not saying I'm immune to that. Um, it's happened, it's happened quite a few times over the years, yeah. but it's a matter of setting expectations and working with your client yeah. so that they understand this. Yeah. And then when this problem comes up, they understand that it's out of your control and that you're not. Especially today. Yes. 
especially today because everyone is aware of what's going on. Yep. So uh, it's, it's a little, it's a, it's a, it's an easier conversation than it was maybe like three years ago. It is, and what I, but what I have found is it's an easier conversation until it happens to them. <laughs> And then when it happens to them, it's like, oh my God. Yeah. But the idea is if you're setting those expectations early and explaining and informing your clients, when it does happen. Communication. Exactly. And that's the big part of this industry that a lot of people forget is that saying that you're gonna be there at eight o'clock on a Tuesday, yeah. you're actually there at eight o'clock and, and being open. So so this is the way I, I operate, right? So I, you know, I start on the job at eight o'clock. It says for some reason, I can't be there at eight, I'm gonna be there at nine. Yep. I'm not just gonna show up at nine. I'm gonna call and say, listen, I'm being delayed, I gotta go somewhere else, or whatever it is that I, that's happened, uh, I'm, you know, I'm just gonna be a little bit later. Because a lot of times what happens is if that customer is waiting for you, they might be, they might have to go to work, they might, might have an appointment, they, they, have might a have, they have a schedule too, right? So they can't just be waiting for you, so communicate always, yep. and that goes to go with the showroom, with your installer, with anyone that, uh, that that is doing any work in on your property. So I'm, I'm curious on this one for you on your yeah. end of things is I, mean, I bumped into Sal at Coverings, which is a huge show. Uh, I think this year it was in Vegas. Vegas yeah. I think I saw you last year in Orlando. Yeah. Uh, I think I've seen you in Atlanta as well. Yeah, we've seen each other at other other, other events yeah. around here too. I'm curious to see because I, I have an answer for you on this one too. Is where do you see the industry going, tile wise? Well, the next bigger, time. bigger, 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 yep. and um, yeah, I think that's basically it. I mean, so people, my, people love big tiles. Yeah, so big tiles are all the But range. you know what? Also, is I see a lot of um, a lot of geometric shapes coming in, coming in as well. Different, you know, three dimensional, three yeah. dimensional. But that's not. But, but the the trend has been for many many years bigger. And that's why we ended up with these six by five by ten foot tiles yeah. because people just want bigger and bigger. And believe it or not, I think they're going bigger. Yep. No, they're definitely going bigger. So what we're seeing a lot is some large format tiles, which is giving you some benefits. Is you're fewer seeing grout lines. fewer grout lines, and fewer grout lines means two things: is a you get to see more of the actual beauty of the tile and less grout. The other thing is less maintenance. Oh, yeah. Which is the, what does everyone complain about? Yeah, the grout. The grout. But see, there's, there's another point there as well. You see now, we, we used to have really just one type of grout, cement, cement based grout. Now we have many, many different kinds of advanced grouts that are very stain resistant. Obviously, uh, if, you've got a, if you've got a big tile, you're not going to need a lot of grout, yep. so the cost of the grout is going to be insignificant really. If you've got a mosaic tile that is very, you know, there's a lot of grout, like a pebble floor or something, then obviously it's going to cost a little bit more for the grout. But still, the cost of the grout in relation to the rest of the job is really not a key factor. So I my advice is to go for the best quality grout you can go. There are some grouts that will cost over $100, uh, like the epoxy grouts. And the you know, and, you know, and some grouts require uh, more expertise and know-how to install them, but that doesn't mean there aren't advanced grouts that you can uh, can use that are going to protect your installation and, and are going to require very little care. And just to make a little point, uh, stain-resistant grouts doesn't mean you spill a, gl a glass of wine on it and then walk away from it. It just means that it's going to give you time to clean it up before it gets stained. It doesn't, it doesn't make it bulletproof yeah. at that point. Unless it's a boxy. Yeah. So, no, and he's, and he's right. And, my line I use with the customers all the time in here is grow is 5% of your project and it's 95% of your <laughs> problems. It really is. Yeah. How many times do you hear, well, the grow cracked or it's well, stained see, or it's colored yeah, If the ground is cracked, right, that's not a grout issue. That's an installation issue. Correct. But, you, but we hear it all yeah, the time. Yeah, oh, yeah. the grow Okay, yep, yeah, this is why yeah. we can send somebody out and so on and so forth. Yeah. But for us, uh, what I'm seeing too is the technology to install these tiles are getting better and better. Oh yeah. It's no longer just tools as well. Exactly. It's no longer just grab a bucket and a trowel and you go and slap tile on the floor and go. Yeah. We're seeing saws that are getting bigger. You know, you know. Oh yeah, I myself have a, a forty-eight inch uh, uh, rail rail saw. So we bought the sixty. Yep. And we're looking now to see if there's one actually even bigger. Oh yeah. And um, like the ruby snap and scores that we saw in covering yeah, were yeah. really nice. That yeah. the P five. Yep. I actually have one of those. Yep. And that is really making a huge difference in the industry. 
And part of that is too is because guys like Sal, uh, guys like my father who've been installing since uh, 71, they're tile guys. Yeah. They've been doing this and they invest in these tools to... So make. a lot of the fly-by-night guys are not investing in those tools. Exactly. And it gives a, an advantage to the old school installer who's, this is their trade, this is their livelihood, and they're going to invest in the tools to make their lives easier to adapt with the industry changes. So what I've also found is the people, the installers that attend trainings, yep. that uh, follow industry standards and want to do things the right way are the guys that are going to invest in new methods and you know, they might use, sometimes they might use the new methods and the new materials and they might use old school materials like yep. you say, but everything they do, they're going to try and do it correctly. And you want someone that's investing in training and tools and, and making it a point to make sure that they do things to last yep. and that they're not just dot and dabbing like five spotting. They're not uh, over, like Thinset, for example, right? Thinset has... Uh, it's called uh, a thin set mortar for a reason. It's the the th thin set is actually a method, thin set, and the mortar is actually a dry set mortar. And there's different kinds of mortar. I don't I don't want to get into that, but most of the time, a mortar has a usable thickness that it can be uh, applied to before it can't hold the tile before. Because if you get a get a thin set and you uh, so you put an inch of thin set behind the tile, right? That mortar is going to shrink. It's going to release from the from the back of the tile, and basically you're not going to have anything holding the tile down or up Outside besides gravity. And well, the three Gs: yeah. gravity, grout, and, and God. God. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, so, it's, so it's important to make sure that you don't get hacks installing your tile. And the way you find out if someone's a hack or not is by first researching yep. what you want done, then asking a lot of questions. Yeah. There's got to be the questions that you ask, but the comfortability has to be there too. And you'll know right away. If you get that feeling that yeah. there's something wrong, yeah. that feeling's usually pretty uh, and, accurate. And then another thing too is um, a tile guy or even a, someone like, like Joe is going to come in. They're not just going to come in and measure. They're going to come in. They're going to ask you what you're looking for, what your ideas are. You know, they're going to look at the structure. They're going to they're going to be they themselves are going to be asking a lot of questions so that first of all they can see because sometimes just because you want tile doesn't mean you can have tile, yep. right? So they're going to look at uh, your your joist structure. They're going to look at they're going to look at everything to make sure that what you want is something that can be done. And then someone like Joe will suggest what options you have and what what the course of action might be well the big thing too is as, as a homeowner or whoever is listening right now is ask the questions don't be afraid so if somebody says we're going to put 24 by 48 tile on the wall and he says it can't be done how, how many times it can't be done why can it not be done or do you not want to do it okay <laughs> there's a big well, wait, 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 wait. Yeah. can it not be done do you not want to do it or because you're incapable of doing well, it well that's exactly it so a lot of the time is we hear on the showroom side, Joe, I love the tile. My contractor says it can't be done. And I'm like, no, he doesn't want to do it. So he either didn't price it accordingly or he doesn't have the tools and the skill sets to do it. To do it. Um, and I tell the customers, I go, I don't sell anything that can't be done. It's not my forte. So, <laughs> so that goes back to, to the prep, yep. right? So it can't be done because you've got a hump in the floor. Yep. Well, you're going to have to address that hump in the floor. It's either going to be, or if it's a valley or whatever, so it's either going to be some self-leveling or some patching of some kind to bring that floor into tolerances. And I have a ton of videos that, that talk about that as well. Yep. But most of the time, you can pretty much install any tile you want on any surface you want as long as it's prepped properly and it's structurally sound and you have the person that's capable of installing it. And to go along that, there's usually a cost that yeah. coordinates to getting it done. It can't be done. Well, why? Well, I need to spend X, Y, and Z to get this prepped accordingly. And now it's up to you to make that decision, to say, all right, I'm okay with spending the extra 500 or or $1,000 to get this prepped. 
to get the look that I really want to achieve. And I tell all my customers the same thing. It's your house. If I'm showering in your bathroom, we got bigger problems. But it's your house, so do it how you want this done because it's going to be there for the next 10, 15, 20 years. And look at your budget. Yeah. Don't if you if you want something that is out of your budget because you know if you you've got ten thousand dollars to spend but you want something that's going to cost twenty, then there is probably a way to get the look you want at the cost you can afford by changing the material. There's a compromise. There's a compromise because yep. you, you can always, not always, but most of the time you can get the feeling that you're looking for at a price you can afford. You know, to a certain point, obviously. Yep. Because if you've only got a hundred dollars to spend and you want a twenty thousand dollar bathroom, it's, it's not, not going to happen. It's not going to happen. There's some compromise, and I tell everyone when they come in to see me, they're like, "Oh, I need to see well, wh where's this dollar value." I'm like, "Let's start with your wish list. Let's put it together. Yeah. Let's see where we land. Yeah. All right, we're at twenty thousand dollars in materials. And you or five thousand dollars in materials. And you, because you have a showroom, you can say, "Well, she, she says I like that tile. Yeah. So, well, that tile is going to cost you so much, but we have something over here that's going to give you that same feeling. Yeah. And we make the tweaks. Yeah. And I tell everyone, we start with your wish list. If your budget's five and we come in at eight, you have two options. We either change your budget or we change your tile. Yeah. Which is no. Or problem. you can do a combination of both. Exactly. And and, and I have no problem working with you to tweak it and modify it to get the end result you're looking yeah, for. Yeah, because you, your main concern is giving the customer what they want yep. and making them happy, right? Exactly. And, you know, obviously you have to make money because you're in business to make money. Yep. But at the same time, you try and stay within uh, the budget that the customer has so she, you can give them, you know, the bathroom that they're looking for. Well, that's exactly it. Or the it's, kitchen or whatever it may be. It's that happy compromise Granted, would I love to sell a ton of tile every day for yeah. big numbers? Yeah, great. Who wouldn't? Yeah. But it's about what fits the customer's needs for their project. Exactly. And, that, and that's the big thing. Yeah. So, so anyway, I, I think we've talked enough. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't we take a look around the showroom, yep. see what you got. Just a quick quick little tour. Yeah. And uh, then we'll call it quits. Yeah. So just remember, I'm going to put uh, Joe's information in the description. And for all of Sal's followers, anyone who comes in and uh, purchases through us and mentions this video, we'll do 10% off your entire order. So. so what you have to say is La Fauci Sal video to get the discount. Yeah. If you don't say those words, you don't get the discount. Exactly. Or even as simple as I know Sal. Everybody knows Sal, right? <laughs> no, 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 because, because then they haven't watched the video. Yeah, so they have true. to say La Fauci, Fauci Sal, Sal video. video. That's the, that, those are the magic words. Okay, so George, just uh, show us a little bit of the stuff that you have. So, you know, with the conversations that we're talking about with the large format tile, this is a lot of the stuff that we're seeing in the industry. So That's that cool. is four feet by two, two feet. feet. That's a big tile. And they actually come bigger. So imagine this is two feet by four feet. Imagine something that's five feet by 10 feet. The wide selection, there's a lot of colors. That you can really so as we come through here, we carry a little bit of everything, which is great. Now you'll see on this wall here some of our popular styles with the Zalish that's really subway tile. Subway <laughs> tile. <laughs> what it, uh, but this has a little. Yeah, bit and these of, uh, yeah, these are more rustic, like almost a handmade look. Exactly. Yeah. So these eight by eight encaustic looks, but this yeah. used to be uh, an average size normal. Scale yeah. tile, yeah, which was eight, eight, by eight, eight by eight, yeah, nine by nine. That was that was the uh, that was the bread and butter back in the eighties. Yeah, I was gonna say late, most of the eighties, early nineties. Yeah. this was kind of it, and then it transformed into the twelve by twelve. Yeah. So yeah. these are you know very popular. Very popular. This something like this here. That's a thirty-six, right? This is actually uh, it's thirty-six, but it comes forty. This yeah, forty. We're seeing a lot of. Here's an eight by forty-five. It's yeah. actually cut down, but it becomes forty-five. So yeah. just as is really That's this a five footer. Is where the industry is going. Yeah. That's this is a lot of where the industry is going. Yeah. You can see here. Twenty-four by forty eight. Yeah. yeah. Just look at